And Lord, my mouth, the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. How many of you have ever been accused by somebody of living in a bubble? How many of you have accused some people of living in a bubble? Yeah, I'm not talking, of course, about the movie The Boy in the Bubble. That's a different type of living in a bubble, but I think most of us know what I'm talking about. Folks who only seem to know one perspective, who seem to only talk to people who think exactly as they do, and who would discredit any news source that they don't actually use. And I hate to say this, but my side of the aisle is just as guilty of this as the other side of the aisle. But I think Jesus in today's gospel invites us away from bubble living. He did it more towards the end, where he said, what credit is it to you if you only love those who love you? What credit is it to you if you only greet those who you like? He's saying, you live in a real world, a real world where not everybody looks like you, thinks like you, and acts like you. And unless you really want to surround yourself in that bubble, you're going to find life very hard to live. Now, that's not to say that I don't like a comfort zone myself. It, life certainly is easier when I'm only hearing what I already know. But I recall my grandfather doing something to me in college and to my sister and one of my cousins. The rest were all left alone for some reason because he thought perhaps our worldview was a little slanted. And he thought that a subscription to the National Review would be very helpful in broadening my horizons. As I said at his funeral, he made me the good liberal that I am. <laughs> Not in an ideological sense, but in a reality of a broader view of the world. And I disagreed with 99% of what I read in the National Review, but I did read it. And I was willing to engage in those days, there was no internet, so I had to write a handout letter to him to tell him what I thought of the article and why I disagreed with it. My cousin, who's very conservative, wished he had been given the subscription to the National Review. <laughs> but I think about these things, and then you look at other things in today's gospel, the very beginning, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. We've heard this. And it's good that Jesus knows scripture, isn't it? <clears throat> Quoting Exodus to them, reminding them that it's there. Now, the problem is, of course, that at first glance we would think, boy, that's going to make an awful lot of one eyed people and some toothless people. But over dinner this week, I got to speak with Don Siegel, who is Jewish, and he said to me, you're missing the point of an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. It's not about equality in vengeance. It's about if you cause somebody to lose their eye, you get to be their eye from this point forward. Mm -hmm. Think about that. It's not so much, okay, you can have my eye, that's pretty much useless. But if I have caused you to lose your income, I get to take you on. The relationship is what is Jesus, what scripture is pointing to. It's not about only a pound of flesh. It's about making sure that people are taken care of when they've been injured. And if you're the cause of that injury, you just took on a great responsibility. But then there's, you keep going through that gospel and I get to another place. If somebody strikes you on the cheek, give them the other. I have to take a step back when I hear that kind of language. Is Jesus inviting me to be a punching bag? Inviting me to be a doormat for other people? Just let them take advantage of me? I know there was an Ed Zelly who would not have put up with that. And I have a feeling most of us would not either. But maybe there's a little bit of Muhammad Ali coming out. Remember Muhammad Ali's strategy? <coughs> Rope a dope? Mm -hmm. So there, come on, just keep coming. Eventually you're going to get tired. And then you're going to have a different thing happen. So I do not believe Jesus ever invites anybody to stay in a relationship that is abusive in any way, shape, or form. He does say that you're going to have to put up with annoying people, though, because that's the real world. And to then sit and take it to that last sentence, probably the hardest one of all, 
Anybody in here perfect? How many of you say parts of you are excellent? Yeah, I would. But I know that perfection, even whether that's vocationally, in things that I enjoy doing as a hobby, are probably not achievable. But to strive towards them is what Christ is calling us to. Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. Well, good luck with that one. However, to decide that I'm not going to try because I know it's not attainable, misses the invitation. The invitation to say, no, you should always be striving to do your best. Whether that's in your job, whether it's in your personal life, whether it's in the relationships you are trying to maintain. And probably right up until the last breath you take, you should be striving for that. There's a little JV baseball coach said, don't bring me down to your level. Always trying to say, no, you need to be raising up to a different standard. And as Christians, we have a, high, a very high standard of how we treat other people and how, because we know how we wish to be treated. So I'd invite you maybe this week, if you're feeling like surrounding yourself in a bubble where you don't have to deal with the annoying humans that don't agree with you, ask yourself, does that make me a better person? Am I striving towards perfection in doing that? Or, if I open myself up a little, perhaps listening, not necessarily agreeing, but being willing to listen, maybe I might find something that I didn't already know. After we think a little bit about the biases that I have. If you encounter other people who are in a bubble, maybe invite them to come on out of the bubble. Say, life is a lot more interesting outside of a well-secured bubble that everybody looks and thinks like you. You might not change every aspect of how you live and how you think, but until you have experience and walked in somebody else's shoes, there is no way to know. And I'm firmly convinced that life outside of a bubble is far more interesting and far more worth living than being encased in a comfort zone would ever be. Amen. Amen.